All right, last video that I just put up, it was how to stop a dog attack. Meaning if you're in the street and a strange dog, random dog comes off a property or down a block at you, how to stop that attack easily, which is by using the fence drive on a dog and that is what this video is going to be all about. So, since I did that last video, it was the perfect way to segue into this video for protection dogs. Okay, so I showed in that last video that going forward on a dog makes them back off, right? It puts defensive pressure on the brain. So these aggressive dogs here that are human aggressive here that I'll show you, once we put pressure on them, they back off. The moment we put sideways, we go sideways without face pressure or to the back where dogs without good defense drive in more prey drive attack the weakness of the side or behind. but are afraid of frontal pressure, okay? Anything that's facing them, a human that's facing them, shoulders facing them, even a little of this will repel a dog for the most part, most dogs, okay? Because that's still defensive pressure with prey pressure, but that little defense pressure or any body tilt will make the dog back off too much defense pressure. So we're going to be working in two drives, prey drive, defense drive, or a lot of people call it fight drive. Okay. So those are the two drives that throughout the video we're going to be working in. All right, defense drive or fight drive. This is the critical drive that makes real protection dogs. Without defense fight drive, you will not have a dog that will fight somebody for real, okay? So I have a, a very popular YouTube video, will your dog protect you naturally, okay? And most people think that their dogs would protect them naturally because they bark at the windows and doors and they bark at people. But the truth of the matter is that very few dogs on this planet have true defense or fight drive. They're just willing, no fear, to have conflict and come and bite and put a beat down on somebody, right? Without proper training. Just have it naturally. So, defense-driven dogs, right, are generally, they're tough dogs in life. They're no-nonsense dogs, generally. They have no hesitation. If somebody starts a fight with them, they'll quickly fight and <laughs> have no issue, you know, with getting into a scrap. 
So dogs who are more dominant in defense drive, in protection, are very aggressive, right? Angry. You could hear that, that real intense fight. It goes sideways, right? Yeah. So, when you come head on facing a dog, right, you're using defense drive. Anything forward facing right at the dog, you are in defense, pressure, conflict. Okay? So. Miss. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen, you'll see on YouTube, all over the place, you see a lot of trainers going, ah, ah, right, right at the dog, forward on. That's defense pressure, right? You really stress a dog when you go forward at them. It doesn't even have to be with the whip, right? Just walking at them and threatening forward is enough. So, if you have a more defense-oriented dog, right, which is the small percentage of the majority of dogs, even in protection work, you will see if you come at them like that and you challenge them, they'll come right out and go after you, even if they don't have bite development or never been agitated. <laughs> Right? So a lot of those dogs will take the fight right to you when you go head on. Alright, and to show you what defense is, these next clips you're going to see all these dogs when they bite, no matter if it's sending the dog on us, us just stepping into them, anything that the dog is facing head on and our shoulders and our face body is facing them at all is defensive posture, defensive pressure. Ooh. Very simple. Prey drive, which all dogs have to some degree, right? Because heredity, animal, still till today, no matter how domesticated dog is, all have some form of prey drive built into them, right? So prey drive is simply chase animal, chase cat. If they were in the wild, chase rabbit, chase whatever's moving to eat, right? It's the hunt, okay? Chase leaves. If we go sideways running, playing to the dog, we're in prey drive. There! Good boy! There! We don't have our shoulders facing. We're, the dog is here facing. We keep our shoulders not at all this way. That's still defense drive, right? Anything of this sort, even though my legs are still this, this is defense drive, conflict, putting stress, threat, pressure.
All right, so let's take a look at this again. So you see, if I go into a fearful posture and don't look, the dog comes forward and stays forward. The moment that I take my head and look at him, already starts defensive pressure and any step in, even though I'm turned sideways and low, causes the dog to go backwards in defensive threat. Okay, and again, when I cover up, the dog comes forward again, and then you see that last one where I look and I take a nice big step in, the dog goes all the way back. The moment I flee, the dog comes forward in prey drive. My movement going away and my back turn causes massive prey drive and brings the dog's brain right out and back into the game because it saw the weakness, took the threat off the brain of back turned and fleeing opposite direction. And that is why you are not supposed to run, right? If you get attacked by a dog in the street and they're coming at you, you don't turn and run unless you know you can get up on something right to safety but that triggers that prey drive that hunt drive for you okay and if you would have just stayed forward and still and put defensive forward pressure it shuts the dog down again 99 percent of the dogs shuts them down and stops the attack that their brain cannot come through that forward pressure Okay, unless you make mistakes. Now, the dogs I'm showing you here in the video with defense problems are very well bred dogs, right? They come from very good pedigrees. So these are not just, you know, a Rottweiler or a giant schnauzer, they all come from very good lines for working. And even so, again, affirming that just because of the breeds too and just because they come from those lines, even so there's still very little, very defensive driven dogs coming from the best lines even, right? And again, that's what makes it such a small percentage of you getting attacked in the street if you put a defensive posture, okay? So, just like here with that dog, okay, who has phenomenal genetics, right? The best of this breed has to offer in the world. And you still see we have to work that defense drive that it's weak. The prey drive is very strong. The defense drive is weaker. Okay? That's defense. Anything completely turned this way, you might be able to turn your head this way with certain dogs and they're okay with it because they're staring at the body as we run by for the bites. Okay? But a lot of dogs, you can't even look at them. You have to just run by and let them hit without staring even. Run, run, oh, good bite. You had him, but you faced him. Oh, shit. So, because you faced him when so he took the bite, he let go. There and now, just go sideways, walk sideways. Now, you see when he let go? Because you stayed still. All right, and those two dogs there, 
sideways with the Doberman as long as you keep facing that direction because he's got a very weak defense drive, right? And doesn't really like the bite game yet, but took a shot and the moment that the decoy goes and looks, he backs right off, let's go. Too much defensive pressure. Even the head coming around to look at him, he let go and went back. The shepherd, same thing, weak defense drive, doesn't have a good game yet, doesn't enjoy protection yet. And then as soon as he tries, the decoy stays still, stands there, which also causes a tremendous amount of stress and pressure from a standing still person on these types of dogs with lower defense drive and made him let go just from staying still caused a lot of threat to him. Come on, Hannibal. There and now, Come just on. go sideways, walk Come sideways. On. Now, you see when he- All right, and here with the Dutch Shepherd again, this is the first time I've ever worked with her. So I don't really know yet her thresholds, right? Of what will turn her on, what will shut her off, if anything. So just a previous video there we spoke about, I can see that there's defensive pressure issues already just from coming in and doing that and creeping towards looking. Now, here in these now next few clips with her, I'm gonna really see what we have by offering the bite. So you can see she's in drive, she's in action, she wants to do this, right? But the moment I go give the bite, she didn't really take it. She wasn't sure what to do with it, which is classic defense issue. <laughs> and then I stood there, not knowing yet, and offered it to help her onto the bite. But my body was facing her, my face, my body. <laughs> So she chewed a little bit and then let go. So what I did was I ran to make momentum and trigger her prey drive. Because I can see right now there's too much pressure in this moment offering too much defense pressure. I take off and prey and instantly she flies and she bites the sleeve. Now, as she hit there and I was going, I turn around and then she let go again because I turned and faced her while she was on the sleeve. So now I know exactly what I'm working with, right? I know we have massive defense problems but her prey drive is very good and I know I can get her on the bites now if she's in prey mode, okay? So now the objective is no problem. If you understand how to do prey and defense, I just have to work at her now in her strength of her prey drive and then work on her defense drive after I make her really comfortable in her dominant drive. And then we'll have a perfect balance. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you this Rottweiler and the dance that goes on between prey and defense, right? Face, Pass up. give the bite. Pass up. Fuck it. There, I hold. Now, there. So, we can clearly see, if you understand what you're watching, of what's happening, why we're getting this dance, watching the forward motion of the dog going all the way back. Turning back, the dog is coming up for the bite. Turning into him again, the dog is going away. 
So here, I'm just going to let these play out a little bit, and then we'll discuss it. Please, pass up. Give the bite. Pass up. Fuck it. There, I hold. Fuck it. Now, there. Pass up. Pass up. Pass up, man. Now, Pass so Frank, you see here? Way too still. You need to be flying from side to side. Flying. Pass up. Like run Pass past up. him and get in the arm, but let him miss it. Pass up. Pass up. Pass up. Right, let it right. You Pass see up. he jumped back? Pass up, man. Right. But Pass up. right. There, man. Right. Miss. Again. Stay still. Pass up, man. Face him. Pass Hiss at him. Pass up, right there. Now make a miss. Pass up, Ma all right, right. Pass up. Pass up, man. Now this one. Give it Pass while you go by. There. Give it to him. Give it to him. Fucking, fucking Max. Okay. Now hold, hold for a second. All right. In this clip, there's a whole bunch of things going on. Okay. So you can see as Frank goes around and tries to run the circle. He's keeping his shoulder there like this, right? And it's normal, just in case, right, that the dog goes for the legs or whatever it is. You know that there's that paranoia going on there as well, not knowing where the dog is going to hit. So as he's doing this, running the circle, the dog wants to come in, right? And he's engaged. But as long as that shoulder is facing as he runs, the dog is holding off. Now, this one, give it while you go by. There, give it to him, give it to him. Okay, now, hold, hold, hold for a second. Hold. Right, and you can see the dog is sitting there doing this, waiting to see if he turns the proper way in a prey mode that he would come in and do an attack. Right, but, right there, man, right, miss, again. Right. The other things is clear is that the moment that Frank goes from his side and faces him direct on, the dog jumps away. Now, so Frank, you see here? And it doesn't matter if he's got the pool noodle in his hand or it's bare hands, right? With no noodle or stick in it. it it's not that that bothers the dog. It's any frontal body pressure and you see the dog automatically jump back and away. Wants none of that. Turning on that defense drive, making the dog repel. Okay, and again, you can see the dog hunting the whole time as he goes up and down the circle but he won't come in because Frank's unintentionally holding him off by looking sideways and looking at him just in case, right? Not allowing the dog to come in and take a hit. So, but if Frank turns his body a certain way, like here, you'll see the dog actually took a, a nip at the back of the suit. As Frank went, dog came around and he felt he had a good prey position and jumped in the air and took a snip at the suit and missed. But that was a moment of comfort in the body turning for a moment the right way for the dog's brain to get comfortable to take a shot and try. All right, let me mention something quick because if you start very young, right? A lot of people start in clubs, uh, you know, sport clubs, dog training club or they themselves know how to raise the puppy and start doing tug toys and bite pressure and you know the sticks over them. You can avoid, which happens to a lot of people, right, who, who have 
working dogs, sport dogs, right? And feel that the dog had the fence from the beginning, not knowing that it really did not, right? <laughs> but starting very young, the puppies don't yet have the understanding yet of the fence and prey, right? Or that awareness yet very young. Okay, so if you start doing tug work and bite work and having other people do it with them and the sticks and get them like that, you can overcome genetic issues like having a lack of defense drive, right? And because of the condition, they're just doing it for fun and not realizing somebody in front of them at that moment because they're young, their eyesight's not that good, right? Their, their awareness is not that good yet. They just get conditioned to seeing somebody tugging with them, the sounds and all that kind of stuff. You can overcome and never see, right, forward issues because it just was a thing from young that they never had to deal with <laughs> later in life because it's just a way of life for them from the beginning that it doesn't bother them at all. Now. So that can be a facade, right, in a lot of ways on a lot of people who have working dogs, sport dogs, thinking that the dog has that. Now, a lot of dogs you'll go test in older age, and even though they've had that, they'll bail when actually a stranger starts putting some real pressure on them without the game they're used to, okay? But starting young helps to condition that so that you hopefully never see the issues of that defense problem, right? Running to hit a sleeve on a friend or somebody or a trainer that's helping you. If young, conditioning that. So just want to put that out there that that has a huge effect, right? On a lot of dogs who their defense drive was not that good genetically, but was overcome through puppy development. So with these dogs, the giant schnauzer, the shepherd, the rottweiler, the dutch shepherd. Come on, Hannibal. There and now, just go sideways. Walk sideways. Now, you see when he Now, this one, give it while you go by. There, give it to him. Give it to him. Okay, now, hold, hold, hold for a second. Hold. What do we do? to get rid of this problem, overcome it, and make the dogs balanced, confident, now and be that perfectly balanced protection over prey and defense, and will actually fight in the end with no problem. This is how we do it. All right, so I'm gonna use the Dutch Shepherd here to show you how we go about this process to get them out of that problem with the dominance thing, the defense drive, and quickly, right, in one session, next day, have them beautifully taking defense pressure like that, okay? So, here, I start with her, I just do my circles, my half circles with her, running around, showing fear, which is what it's all about. Build confidence, show fear, movement, prey drive, fear, movement, little bits of defense facing her, and then cowering that she got me out of my defensive posture. And then I run the circle and eventually give her a bite going sideways, carrying her, letting her have the sleeve and giving her a win. Oof. 
Wow. Oof. <laughs> wow. All right, so it's a lot of running around. Every once in a while, I test her defense drive coming in on her. She backs up, I flee away, giving her confidence, but I don't go at her in defense, right? I slowly pressure her, coming in, creeping. She goes back, then I just retreat. Right, so just playing with that a little bit and then playing chicken as I go away to build that up. And then running the circle, miss the sleeve, sideways, miss the sleeve, sideways. Okay, and then you can see she got better. And then in this last clip here, I actually put more defensive pressure on her because she was handling it well and I gave her a few bites already, building her confidence on me. And then you see me turn her into me and I start hitting the leash right over her head in a defensive posture that previously she would have let go. Now I know I have her in a state of mind. She can take that defensive pressure, right? And now hold on to the sleeve, okay, which she did. next day, when we went back to our protection with her, let's see what yesterday's session did for her defensively. So, this clip, I go right at her straight on with a stick up straight at her and the worst thing can happen to a dog that has defense problems. <laughs> And perfect, right on, hit the sleeve perfectly, full mouth, no problem. Okay, so in one session of just toying around, not over threatening her, not physically going after her, pinching her, any of that kind of stuff, we get her in a groove, we get her comfortable, we get her to like the work, enjoy the work, settle down and not be afraid of that frontal pressure and enjoy it, right? Just like that. So in one session, we were able to clear up that fear of me coming forward at her and have her just come out and hit perfectly in defensive posture. Okay, and same with the other dogs, the Schnauzer, the Shepherd, the Rottweiler. After we built them in this way, now we get full on aggressive, defensive, real fight, right? <laughs> really, really strong defense game. Good boy, Ninja! Good boy, Ninja! Good boy, Ninja! 
Good. Oh, Ooh, damn. What? Mm. Good boy. Ooh. I tried to hold on. Woo! Look at that. Ooh. Ooh, damn. Go! Go! Back, 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 back. Good boy. Back, back. Now. There. Good boy. Open up, Frank. Good Open up. Boy. There. <laughs> back, back. Now. There. Good boy. Open up, Frank. Good Open boy. up. There. Same time. Fuck it! Good boy! Good boy, yeah! Good boy! Good boy. Right, leash, leash, right! Yeah. So that is how we go about it. That is what you get in the end when you play the drives properly and balance them out. We go from strictly prey dogs without real fight to in the end, a balance of both, but really good, strong, aggressive fighting defensive fighting right that now they enjoy it they can't wait to hit you and they get really aggressive on the bites when they hit you enjoying the game when you can balance you bring that defense drive up to balance out with the prey drive and you get the best protection dogs if you're interested I have an instructional video with these dogs and the full training and other dogs of how we develop them from the beginning to the end it's about three hours three and a half hours of the full coverage of how we do this so if you're interested i have it on my platform so i hope this educated that you learn something from it so till next time I'm Richard Hines, and I'll see you on the next video.